Welcome to Sweethearts or Arrivals. I'm Sharla. I'm Justin. Today we're going to be doing a list. Yep. And this is a list that if we ever had to call our board game collection down to 50 games, what 50 would make the cut? <laughs> yeah. And today we're going to be doing the last portion of the video. It's going to be uh, games 5 to 1. Crazy. And to determine which games were on the list, what mm -hmm. was our criteria? Uh, the games we would cry the most if we were never allowed to play them again. Right. So considering we are at five to one, oceans of tears. Oceans. <laughs> really? Sure. Like a quarter of a cup at the most. It looks like an ocean. Tears yeah. aren't that big. No, it's true. Yeah. Lots of tears. <laughs> what an over-exaggerator. Uh, <laughs> so it's my turn to go first. It is. Woohoo! Wait, that means you get to be like the last person to say you're number one. <gasps> yep. We always have to have the final word. What? <laughs> it's not like that. No, it's not. I'm just kidding. That's uh, totally untrue. It is. My number five is the Palaces of Carrara. It's a good game. Yes. Palaces of Carrara was the first game that introduced me to, here's a system that's not overly complex. Mm -hmm. Have you mastered the system? Good. Because now every time you play it, the end conditions and the points at the end are going to be different which means your strategy of manipulating that system is going to be different every time you play the game. Right. And Palace of Cry came out and we got it and I was like, I don't understand what just happened there. But I'm intrigued and as I played it more, I'm like, this is amazing. More games need to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoy that game a lot too. Yeah. And the system itself is really fun and satisfying and fulfilling and then you play it with a completely different set of end goals and you foolishly use the same strategy you played in the last <laughs> game and get your butt kicked. <laughs> yeah, handed to you on a silver platter. Yeah, um, and, which is awesome. I love it. it was, yeah, it's a fun game. Yeah, really awesome game. And I don't know how easy it is to get your hands on a copy. I don't think it's easy at all because no. we had to get a German copy. Yeah. Which is fine because the game itself doesn't have much text on it, just like the end game cards. Yeah. Um, and the rule book, of course. Yeah, you can download the rule book uh, from TMG's website or the Board Game Geek, so you can get that fairly easy. And there's a couple people that have put all of the cards in English on the Board Game Geek. So what I did was I downloaded that and had it printed on cardstock, mm -hmm. and then done. We don't have to worry about the language dependence. Yeah, that's it. So if you are looking to maybe get the game. And I'm pretty sure you can get it from like Board Still Game Bliss. Import. Yeah, or an import. Yeah. Um, don't let the language um, or the German copy like get in your way because it's very easy to fix that. Right. And it doesn't cost much at all to fix that. Yeah. A couple bucks. Are you sure that's who published it in English? You said TMG there though for the rule book. I think it might have been Z Man. Yes, you're right. Oh, okay. My mistake. Okay. Z Man Games. Cool. It would, it would be really good if they republished this. That mm -hmm. would be amazing. That's, I'm surprised they haven't. It's a good idea. Yeah. Awesome game. So that was my number five, which means we are to your number five, which my is? My number five is Stone Age. Stone Age. Wow, it's high. It is high. But I like, I mean, it's not an overly complex game. Nope. And I do generally more enjoy, like, the midweight games. Yeah. And it's more of a, well, maybe a light to midweight. Yep. It's midweight if you put the expansion in. Mm -hmm. Um. But I just really like how clean it is i was gonna say yeah. it's not simplistic but just you do this to get this to do and get this it's yeah. really straightforward yep and i like a game that i can really focus in on and i don't have to get too complex in my tactical or strategic thinking gotcha and of uh, course it's resource management yeah, resource you're gathering management, your resources to placement. build your huts, and then you're collecting cards and set collection. Yeah, it's all the things I like in board games. I I enjoy Stone Age. I really enjoy it when you add the expansion because it adds s some extra paths mm -hmm. that you can take towards victory. Yeah, which I really enjoy. 
Yeah. yeah. And I stayed away from it for a long time just because of the theme kind of turned me off. Hmm. But it's the gameplay is really, I like it yeah. a lot. I find it solid. Yeah. Great game. Mm-hmm. Moving on to my number four. My number four is the best two-player only game we have ever played and still play a lot. And that is... Targi. Targi. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, amazing little game. Um, it's it's a longer game than you would think. It is longer than you think. But when you're done, it still feels like you played a short game because you're like involved in the you're game. You're engaged the whole, the whole way. time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a great little um, uh, worker placement, resource management. Um, you're building a tableau of cards, which is really cool. But there's this really sneaky aspect of like spatial. Because you put your target here, which means you've cut off uh, that row. And if you put your target here, it means you've cut off this row and you're getting the card where they meet. Where they intersect. Yeah, intersect. Yeah. And then you're, that whole thing is a lot of blocking the other player from what mm -hmm. they need. Yeah. And it's a great little two-player game. Yeah. My favorite. Cool. Yeah. Ready for my number four? Your number four is... Targi. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the second time we matched. Yep. Um, just all the reasons you just said, of course. Yeah. Um, and it's funny how you were saying that you, the blockage and trying to block your opponent from the other thing that they might be. And then in the process of that, like you end up intersecting on a thing that you didn't even want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's like, now you have to figure out yeah. what am I going to do with this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Resource management. And there's a couple of different ways that you can focus on. Um, to win too, so yeah. it's kind of cool. Yeah, um, special powers on the cards mm -hmm. that you're putting in your tableau, right? Versus cards that have no special powers but give you more points. Mm -hmm. Very cool balance there. And the the cards that you put in your tableau, sometimes they're going to say how you get the points. Yeah. So they're going to give you different goals to shoot for each time. Yeah. Uh, I remember we did our review of this, and the designer. Um, thanked us for the review and mentioned that he had an expansion, but it hadn't been picked up picked yet. up yet. And just like, oh, we need somebody to pick that up. Yeah, because Target is it's an excellent two-player game. Yeah. yeah, awesome game. So that was our number, number four. four. <laughs> yes, so we're up to my number three. Mm -hmm. My number three. I know we're not gonna have crossover because you already mentioned it. It's Castles of Burgundy. That's a good game. Yeah, and I love Castles of Burgundy. Mm -hmm. I love you roll the two dice, and then even though everything you can do is based off those two dice, there's so many different things you could possibly do with that. Mm -hmm. Imagine that's awesome. Lots of cool ways that you can um, manipulate the dice or mitigate them to do what you want them to do. Um, so many cool little ways of getting points and then of course um, when you're playing Castle of Burgundy you have your player board which has your um, domain on it that you're trying to fill up with cities and fields and all that but there's you can start off with the base game where everyone has the same board and then you can go into everyone mm -hmm. having different boards and there's expansions that add even more, more boards. boards so that can change the game drastically from game to game which mm -hmm. is awesome yeah and it's some people have fun. said that doesn't look very good when you when you play it and when you first look at your player board it's oh, just a yeah, bunch of hexes, hexes with numbers yeah. or dice but once that has filled up with all the tiles by the end of the game, it looks awesome. Yeah. Because you've built that. And it's amazing. Yeah, I think we did hear someone say it was one of the ugliest games out there. Yeah. But I don't no. see that myself. Nope. I think it's a fine looking game. Yeah. I mean, it's not the cutest thing. But it is awesome. It's an awesome game. And yep. it looks just fine. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That was my number three. What's your number three? My number three is Trajan. Wow, higher than me. I guess. That's I was crazy. surprised that you put it. <laughs> Number eight? Yeah. But I like it as a two-player game. I like it a lot. Yeah. And it's just that you get so focused on what you can do and how to manipulate your Mancala or your people in your Mancala to go and send them out to do various tasks for you on the main board. Mm -hmm. And it's, I just find it a great puzzle. Yeah. And... You can't really do everything. Like you get to focus on a few things each game and see which yeah. path to victory is kind of gonna work for, up you. for you. Yeah, that yeah. time. And it's got just that little bit of randomness thrown in there too. Like, yeah. 
Because there's always going to be those demands. Yeah. Which is going to kind of side, like sidestep your strategy sometimes, take you away from what you're focused on. It's like, oh, now I have to get two bread this time. Yeah. You really Yikes. have to. And then, you have to kind of build up a demand, um, yeah. like engine. Yeah. So that you don't have to worry about it anymore and can focus. And then on you can focus on the other stuff. Yeah. But sometimes it just sneaks in there. It's like, oh. Yeah. Now how am I going to get that before the end of the round? It's a game where... Not in a frustrating way, just yeah. like in a puzzle yeah. sort of way. And it's interesting because when we play it, um, when you take your Mancala action, the number of cups that you have kind of bounced, that, that, that's, a, that's another track, a time track that you mm -hmm. have to keep. A lot of times we forget to do that because yeah. we're so focused on what we're trying to do. And sometimes we're so focused on what we're trying to do, we forget whose turn it is. Yeah, we'll be sitting there <laughs> counting like... Our pieces in our main cow, and then all of a sudden it's like, is it's, it your go? It's, it's, your it's your go. go. <laughs> I just I went. Just went. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Awesome game. Love Trajan. Mm -hmm. Cool. It's a lot of fun. Which means we're to my number two? I think so. All right. My number two is Bora Bora. Ooh, that's very high. Yeah. And for a while, Trajan would have been here, and Bora Bora would have been lower. Really? But I really love the theme of Bora Bora. It is a really nice yeah. theme. And it's not so much the, I mean, the islands and the tribe thing is cool, but I really, really love the gods. Oh, okay. Because there's a lot of cool things you can do with the gods, mm -hmm. and it can really affect your strategy and stuff. It's yeah. awesome. That's cool. Yeah. And again, I love the, you know, I can either put this die here and take a little bit of that action but block you from doing it, or mm -hmm. I can take a lot of that action and not block you. Right. It makes the dice really cool. Yeah. Fun, awesome game. Your number two. My number two is brand new to us. Wow. I know, and it's two. my number two. Holy cow. It's Isle of Sky. Wow, did that just jump right up there. I love that game. Yeah. And it's because it's tiling, which is always a plus in my book so um and also the variable goals yeah but it's how they did it it's like they have the four goals mm -hmm. but then the first round you're going to score this one and this one and yeah. the second round you're going to score that one and that one and then i can't remember when it starts going oh all of a sudden you get to that score for three yeah but each of those four goals is going to score what twice in the game i think it's or, three times i can't remember yeah so it's like this weird timing of like trying to get points for those goals at certain times but then you're also really it's random on what tiles you're going to draw and what's going to be offered yeah so it's you're only going to have so many tiles to work with to gain those goals so it's a huge puzzle yeah. and then how you bid on the tiles to get them that is, awesome. is a whole nother puzzle because yeah. You're going to have three in front of you, and you're going to choose one that gets discarded. Well, you're going to look at your opponent's city, and you're going to see the very best one for them. It doesn't matter if it's going to be a good one for you. As long as the opponent's not getting it, you're going to throw that one away. And or then it's to try to you're figure you're going to make it really expensive, really expensive and make them pay through the nose for it so you can get all right. the cash. Yeah, because yeah. then you're going to sort <laughs> out. You only have so much money, so then the other two tiles, you're going to put money, your own money. And then you're going to reveal, because this is behind a screen, mm -hmm. and then you're going to, whoever's turn it is to go first, gets to buy one. So yeah. the person that buys one, you get the money that they bought for that. It's yeah. really cool. So it's yeah. really swingy on how your money can go, depending on, like you said, yeah. if you really want a tile, you might put like, oh, I'm going to make this one, depends on how much money you have, but eight. Yeah. Well, then all of a sudden you've got sixteen dollars if they buy it. Yeah. So. The the bidding system in Sky of I kind of reminds <laughs> Isle of Sky. <laughs> Isle of Sky. That's what I meant. Sky Sky of Isle. Whatever. In that game, it reminds yeah. me of um, uh, Power Grid for Sparks because it's a bit of a mind game. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes that's the hardest part. Yeah. Of that's. It takes the longest. Yeah, to get so everything set up the way you want it you want for that bid bidding for. to reveal. Yeah. Which could be a problem except everyone's doing it simultaneously. Right. Which is brilliant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, awesome game. That's why it made it into my 50. The only reason it's not higher is just because we haven't played it a lot. But we've played it a few, like, yeah. out of all the new games we've had, yeah. we've played it quite a few times. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. I can see that going up in my list later. Yeah. Yeah. Then you're number two. I liked it. I like it a lot. A lot. <laughs> so that would be my number one. Your number one. My number one should not be a surprise to, to people who have anybody. talked to me, uh, heard me talk about it. And that is The Village. Mm -hmm. The Village is my favorite game, hands down, out of everything. Mm -hmm. um, the Village is, um, you have action selection. You've got to pick a cube up off the action space that you want to take. But then that cube itself is a resource that you then have to manage in order mm -hmm. to pay for other actions. Um, you have worker placement because you're taking your workers and you're placing them out onto the board in order to train them to do jobs. That's cool. Uh, you are managing time because when you get to a certain amount of time in your family, one of your oldest generation has to then die and they need to be strategically placed so that when they die, they get remembered forever in the Chronicle, which gives you a lot of points. Mm -hmm. So many different strategies uh, and paths to victory. You can focus on this, this, and this, or you can focus on that, that, and that. And, and, and I don't even think in the base game we've explored all the different kind of combos of strategy yeah. you could play. Then you add in the inn, which means you can then get these cards that give you extra points for the end I of the like game. I like those cards. And they can really help you kind of focus on a strategy. Mm -hmm. Or they can just give you bonuses to help you with your other strategies. And then we have the port. And the port we've only played with once. Mm -hmm. And the port itself means you can go out with your resources and find new ways of utilizing those resources for winning. So again, more paths. Mm -hmm. But I think with the port, not the port itself, but it comes with goals. Mm -hmm. And that by itself you need to get right. for the village. Because one of the things that can be really difficult in the village with it having so many paths to victory is when you first start, what do you do? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what yeah. you do is you play with these goals and you have a easy one that gives you some points and you have a hard one that gives you a lot of points. Mm -hmm. And you look at those and go, that's what I'm shooting for. And you usually get them completed by about halfway through the game at mm -hmm. least. Yeah. And that has given you that start. A direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome, amazing game. Yeah. And... All of the stuff I just mentioned is awesome, but what really makes it the number one game for me is that when you're doing all this stuff, all of these stories tend to come out of me. Yes, and we'll refer to it as like the Sweethearts or Rivals expansion because it's like you have someone in the wagon making um, warehouse, yeah. and that's the, the generation one say that he's the last one left, yeah. he's gotta die. What happened to him in yeah. the wagon making warehouse? Did a wagon remember. wheel fall on him and crush yeah. him or something like? Uncle oh, Joe, and yeah. he was he was remembered for his clumsiness in the wagon making warehouse because he died making a wagon. Yep, fell on him, crushed yeah, him, or something Very horrible, yeah. tragic. Or maybe he he like it <laughs> crushed his foot and he got an infection. And he like <laughs> yeah. Anyway, like so, <laughs> it's a that's, funny thing. That's why I like the village. My favorite game. All the mechanisms are super unique. They blend well together, and mm -hmm. there's just there's a lot of story that comes out of playing that game. Yeah. Yeah. So my number one is The Village. Mm -hmm. Favorite game ever. Yeah. What's your number one? My number one is Vikings. Nice. I like Vikings a lot. It's funny, because I'm trying to think of it, and I, I'm blanking on it, but I should have known that. You should have known Vikings? Yeah, because it wasn't on your list yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the rondelle, and it's how the Vikings come out. So you've got different color vikings and each color represents a different kind of viking yeah. so like they come out in the order in which they kind of go up the food the chain. food chain yeah kind sure. of yeah. so like you've got blue and then you've got yellow and then green red and then the warriors Black and then and the yeah. boat swings yeah or bosons. bosons and then you're gonna take the tiles that come out and then they get generated like you're going to start the island ones where the fishermen start, the blue ones. Yep. And then if you're going to get a boat, they're going to come out in the opposite direction where the bosons start. Mm -hmm. And then the rondelle is going to move as you buy them, making the tile and the meeple that comes with it a different price each time. Yeah. So that's one of the aspects of the game I enjoy the most. And then also once you get that tile and that worker, where are you going to place them? 
Yeah. Do you have a place to put him in the in the row of the color of the meeple he is? Or are you going to have to place your your land tile in a strategic spot and then put your meeple up and wait for the bosun to be able to transport him at a later time? Yeah. It's a hard decision. Lots of really tricky, puzzly decisions mm -hmm. in in the buying and the placing aspect mm -hmm. of the game. Yeah. And then if you play the advanced game, which is the best way to play it, um, your bosons can only bring out one meeple, but it also adds a bunch of like special power cards mm -hmm. that you can get. So yeah. there's another aspect that you have to deal with. Yeah. And it's awesome. Yeah. It sounds a whole lot more complicated <laughs> than it, it seems because it's not. Right. But at the same time, it just works so good together. All of your decisions are very, very, very important, mm -hmm. and especially buying. I love the buying part because you're like, yeah. I could buy that, which means she'll probably buy that. But is the wheel going to turn there, and is yeah. that going to make that cheaper? And do I want to make that cheaper for them? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it's always, it's always kind of uh, like if if you've figured out what to buy in order to trigger what you think is going to be the next seven buys and someone buys something you didn't think they were going to and it throws mm -hmm. everything, everything in chaos off. Yeah. yeah and you gotta re strategize mm -hmm. yeah and it's got tile lane and then the meeple placement and the rondelle it's yeah. awesome it is an awesome game mm -hmm. vikings is awesome i like it a lot all of these games are awesome mm -hmm. a lot of games are awesome yeah all of these games are awesome and these games are awesome yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> So that is our top 50 games if we had to cull our collection down to 50 instead of buying a new shelf. Right. Which I think we're just going to buy a new shelf. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like the most, um, the best idea actually. Yeah. Just get a new shelf. Yeah. Yep. So I think we're going to follow this up with one more video. Yeah. Let's see how many crossovers we have. Yeah. And see how high over 50 yeah. <laughs> our 50 call is. Yeah. <laughs> if we were to combine our lists. Exactly. Yeah. So we're going to do that, and then I'll wrap this, uh, this series up. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Laters.